Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I house. can't control. And her whole body. I want more of you, God. Father, work. Father, I want more of you, work. God. Father, in Jesus name. Set a fire down in my soul yes. that on, I church. can't contain and I can't Father, just control. Touch this woman of God. I want more of Lord, you, God. Lord, she's praying for a breakthrough in her I family, God. I want more God. of you, God. Lord, you told me something about this Set house. Set a fire down Father, in my soul. Lord, you're going to bring you unity God. back. Lord, you're going to bring a I revival of unity. You, in Jesus' name. In I Jesus' name. More. The reason the name Lord Jesus Christ, we're excited what God is doing. This is an important day in your child's life. Right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church, I will be praying the prayer covering over them, putting them under the blood of Jesus, giving every family a bottle of known to oil. We'll be giving out school supplies. Great things are going to be happening. Your child needs, your grandchild, your niece and your nephew, your godchildren need to be in this service this morning at 11 a.m. before they go back to school. I'll tell you more about it right after this. You don't want to miss Wednesday night, every Wednesday night at 7.30 in the Word with Pastor Steve. On Wednesday night, I have more time to slow down and to minister with the Word of God to you. You just need to be here. Also, we pray for the sick. Great things happen every Wednesday night. I'll see you in the Word with Pastor Steve on Wednesday night. You don't want to miss Friday morning miracle service. I will be praying for your family. I will be praying for sickness. Do you need a miracle in your life? Be with us Friday morning at 1030. Every Friday morning, God shows up in a great way. We'll see you here Friday morning for your miracle. You don't want to miss Friday morning service where great things are happening right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. But today is important. Yeah, we've been giving out school supplies to all of the children that need it. It is so important to help our children to have the equipment that they need to go back to school. We will be giving every parent a bottle of anointing oil to pray over your child before they go back to school. But I want to lay hands on them. I want to put a blood covering over them. I want, to, I want to make a declaration to the devil that your child will make good grades. I want to make a declaration to the devil that he cannot touch that child. They will, uh, you know, they will stay in school. They will be covered by the blood of Jesus. No stray bullet will find them. No knife will find them. Hallelujah. But they will stay connected into their books. They will stay connected with God and take Jesus into the schoolhouse. Today is important. Granny, get up now. Get on the phone. Call those grandchildren and get them here. Mama, get them up. 
up, get them up, get them up, throw them a pop tart on the oven and just throw them something to eat, put them some clothes on, get them here. I want them here to pray for them. I feel anointing for your child today. It's important your child be covered by the blood of Jesus. And today in the 11 a.m. service, we want to do that. Make your plans to be with us. It is awesome to see all these children anointed and which are prepared. I like to say we're making evangelists out of them and sending them blood covered into the school. How do they'll be going in as sheep among the wolves this week. And how do we don't know what the outcome will be for some children, but we know what the outcome is going to be for our children. We're going to cover them by the blood of Jesus. Make your plans to have your children and your grandchildren here, free school supplies. But more than that, I want to anoint that child. I want to pray over that child. Great things are going to happen in your child's life. We're excited what God is doing. You know, so many great things that's happened here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. That I could go on and tell you. I just want you to hear a testimony of what God's already done. I, I wish everybody just begin to you reach your hands towards this woman, this young girl. She has, she has asthma. How many believe that God can heal asthma? How many believe that God can heal asthma? Healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Christ, in the name of Jesus, we speak healing in Jesus' name. I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to take another deep breath. Take another deep breath, girl. God's healing you right now. God is restoring those little vessels and those nerves inside of that lungs right now. Right now. Hello, are you breathing good? Are you breathing good in Jesus' name? Somebody say in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Which and here's another one. How that she was born premature and her lungs is not fully developed. But how many believes that God is a healer? If God can heal her of asthma, how that God can heal this young girl? How did the brother that come with cancer? Have y'all just noticed in the lungs? How many lungs? The devil wants to put fear in somebody's life, but I come to tell the devil, God created these lungs. God created this body. God can develop these. Oh, hallelujah. I have a grandbaby, Cassandra. She's in the youth ministry or the children's ministry this morning. That she was born as a premature, and she was you know, you know, only a pound and a half. Her lungs were not developed. Hallelujah, but look at her, her now. She's working for God. And I'm going, to, I'm going to speak that into your life as well, girl. That God's going to raise you up, that you can be able to breathe. She's over there teaching this, this morning. She's ministering this morning. I'm going to pray that God heals your lungs so that you too can minister for the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Yes. Lord, you've done it for my grandbaby. You can do it for her. I speak to these lungs fully developed this morning. I speak for these lungs fully developed this morning. Yes. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. I want you to take a deep breath. Take another deep breath. Open your mouth up and take a deep breath, girl. How do you, how do you feel? You feel okay? You, you really feel real good? You think you can outrun me? Huh? We're going to find out how good those lungs are. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on, you can do better than that. Don't let an old man outrun you. And you, how you feel? Are you out of breath? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. You can leave here today with a testimony. You've been touched by the hand of God. Make your plans to be with us. Today is the day we're anointing your children, giving every family a bottle of oil to anoint them. I want to put a blood covering over children. We will give out free school supplies. And today's going to be an awesome day in your child's life. Get them here. Paxson Revival Center Church. I thank God for our youth pastors, our children's pastors. We have five great children's pastors, and how they just love your children. They, you know, you know, they just work with your children, minister to your children, mentor your children. But mom and dad, they got to get here in order to receive the blood cover, and you need to have them here this morning at 11 a.m. Enter the preaching of God's word at this time. When we don't have that commitment to God, our standard begins to fall. Here they were; they were serving other gods. Not only serving other gods, the Bible says, verse 15, verse, uh, verse 26, did not Solomon 
the king of Israel sin by these things. What things were this? Yet among many nations whom where there was no king like unto him, beloved of his God, and God made him king over all of Israel, nevertheless, even did out, outlandish things with women to cause us sin. We allowed that to get in our spirit and our life. Here was Nehemiah says, look back at history. We need to look back at history ourselves. Where did you come from? That's where the devil wants you to go back. Why did you live sin behind you? Why did you come out of that lifestyle of sin? It's because you don't want your children to come up the same way. We, none of us would, Hallelujah, that's ever been on drugs, want our kids to be a drug addict. How many of you sitting here this morning, you was full-fledged drug addict? Man, you was messed up in drugs. I want to see your hand. Hundreds of hands over here. How many of you would this morning say, and so I see you raise your hand. Stand up. You want your kids to, to be in drugs? And I'll fight you. You'll fight no, me? I'll fight you. No, sir. And why is it that you don't want your kids in drugs? It's a, it's a brain rich. It's a damaging not only to yourself but to God. I would hate that. And we all have the same attitude. We don't want our kids. But look at ourself. It's only doing me harm. I need to hush up. I can do what I want to. I'm only harming myself. I can live in life of porno, but I'm only harming myself. It's just a no offense crime. It don't bother anybody. It bothers your children. This is where that Nehemiah, Nehemiah come back. And Nehemiah was so mad. Can I use that word? He got somebody by the hair and jerked her hair off. I don't believe he had a wig on either. I believe he just got him a handful of hair. Something righteous inside of him began to cry out. Said, this is not what we fought so much for. This is not what we worked so hard for. This is not what we've done so hard for. We've got our walls built back. We got our gates put on. And it looked like God has blessed us. And now we've dropped our defense. Don't that sound like the church today? God has blessed us so much until we've dropped our defense. What we used to believe in, we don't believe anymore. What we used to do, we don't do anymore. Oh, and people say, well, pastor, what is it about? We just want the easy religion, we just want that go to, uh, and go to, go to church that the preacher don't preach about sin. Huh? Somebody said to me the other day, said, Pastor, you know you preach about sin a lot. I said, why? Because the word talks about sin a lot. The sin is the one thing that separates us away from the face of God. It is sin. Huh? Well, Pastor, are you telling me? Uh, I got, oh, I'm not telling you. God's telling you. Huh? I'm just repeating what God said. I'm the mouthpiece of God. He said, be ye holy even as I am holy. He tells us to come out to be a peculiar people. You know what a peculiar person is? It's somebody that don't like act like everybody else. We ain't supposed to be acting like somebody else. We're supposed to be acting like our daddy, the one that we've hung around with. We're supposed to be acting like a child of the king, speaking the language of faith and the language of God. We need to be teaching. Moses said, write it on your hand and put it on your forehead and write it on the doorpost. So every time your kids will come in they will come out and when your kids start asking you what mean is these stones uh, this is where God brought me from uh, and God brought me out of something uh, and I gotta praise God and the Bible said verse 15 gonna get quiet here now in those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath bringing in the sheaves and laying the asses all as also wine and grapes and figs, all manners of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them, all of those that sold, and told them, this is not what we do on the Sabbath. Here, you will, but pastor, we are not bound by the Sabbath. I understand, and I agree with you, we're not bound by the Sabbath. But what did you do when you used to be in the world? You didn't come to church on Sunday. But now, since you got saved, now I can ease back. I don't have to go to church every Sunday. God says, can't you give me one day? Can't you give me one hour? 
Can't you give me two hours? He asked his disciples, could you not just carry with me and pray with me for just one hour? Could you not just give me one hour? Could you not, only if you understood the temptations that was coming to you. See, it's not that we need prayer for us totally. We need that connection with God. We need that relationship with God. It says something to God. God, I I trust you that you're going to work it out with my family. I trust you that you're going to work it out with my children. I trust you're going to work it out. What God is looking for, and this is what upset Nehemiah. Nehemiah got back. He found found him working on the Sabbath. He found him selling outside of the gates. He found him doing everything but what they were supposed to be doing. They had neglected the ways of righteousness and went back to their old ways of comfort saying, I want to go back. And he begins to say, there's a spiritual something going on in your life. Something spiritual that I need to deal with. Hear what he says. In verse 18, did not your fathers thus And did not our God bring us all this evil upon us and upon the city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel. He said, by messing with the Sabbath day. He said, by by defiling the Sabbath day. What you can ask the very first thing of a person whenever they start backsliding. What was the very first thing the devil done? Got you to miss church. And the man of God set it on. If I can get you. See, some of you standing here, you would never miss a Wednesday night. You would never miss a Sunday night. And oh, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Oh, and and, and it seemed like I had so much victory. What happened? You give that space to the devil. Oh, but pastor, I had to do this. Oh, I couldn't come to church. I always I like to ask this question. I've asked it for years. Could you go to work that if it was raining a little bit? Would you go to the doctor's office if it was raining a little bit? Would you go down the street and pick up your kids to stop them getting them out of the rain if it was raining a little bit? If we can do all of that, why can't we come into the house of God when it's raining? Oh, pastor, you must be mad. I ain't mad this morning. I'm glad because God has brought us into this house today because he's given us that opportunity. He said, I'm going to rebuild your walls and I'm going to put the gates back on to bring protection on your family. I'm going to bring you back into safety. He said, but if you would be hid in me, if we would be hid in Christ, if we would come unto God, and if we would come to where God is, he said, I will give you peace as long as the children of Israel, hallelujah, was inside of the wall of Nehemiah as long as they was inside of the wall of Jerusalem as long as they were inside of the wall they was peace when Nehemiah left mamas and dads when you leave and you don't set a principle and a stand the devil's going to come in and get your kids but I'm telling the devil now I'll roll up my sleeves I'll do I I kick off my shoes I'm going to fight for my kids I'm going to fight for my family and it's going to start with me I'm going to be the one that prays. I'm going to be the one that fasts. You can ask my kids, where's daddy going to be Wednesday night? Where's daddy going to be Friday morning? Where's daddy going to be Saturday morning prayer meeting? Where's daddy going to be on Sunday night? They already know I'm going to be in the house of God. I've already set a standard. I've already set a standard that I'm going to be here. Verse number 10 I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given to them. For the Levites and the singers did not work, were fled unto everyone to his field. In other words, when sin entered in, people were not bringing their sacrifices to God. What used to be a place where sacrifices were brought to God, now the enemy had come in and was living in that place. I was living in the place where sacrifices were given. Then all of a sudden the work began to cease because people were not bringing their tithe and their offerings unto God. If we were at a church, thank God that you're a tithing church. Thank God that you're a giving church. Give yourself a hand clap. You're tithing in a giving church. But if you decided one day that 
And everybody decided one day we're not going to give our tithe and our offerings. First of all, you're going to miss the blessings of God. Then you begin to hear, did you hear? They, you know, they shut Wednesday night off. Did you hear Paxton's not on TV or on radio anymore? Did you hear they no longer have ministries in that church? This is what happened to Nehemiah. Nehemiah said, whenever I come back in, the Levites, the workers in the church, were out now, got them other jobs. When sin comes in, see, the devil starts like this. If I get you to stay at home, I'll stop you from paying your tithe and your offerings. And when I stop you from paying your tithe and your offerings, I got your family. They're going to talk another language. I got your children because you're not believing in what you should supposed to be believing in. A person that is a committed to God and committed with a call upon their life, they're going to be a tither. Tithing is not a church's way of raising money. It's God's way of trusting you to see if you're going to trust him. See, I trust God. I trust God. There have been weeks that I didn't know where my money was coming from. There have been weeks that I didn't know how I'm going to get from one end to the other end. I didn't know how we are going to put gas in the tank. And I didn't know how. Matter of fact, there was a couple of times that our lights got turned off. And, you know, I know how to light a candle. Hello, I know how to light a candle. I know how to take some pork and beans and, and pour it over some rice. I know how to do that. But it's not where God wants to keep us at. He wants to keep us into a place uh, that is a blessing of God in our life. Uh, if you want God to bless you. It must begin in the mother and the father. We must be the one to stand so our children will live what is holy and righteous. My children are tithers. My grandchildren are tithers. So don't you hate on my kids when God start blessing them. Don't you hate on my grandkids whenever God start blessing them. Why? My granny made $10 a month SSI. I know that was a lot of money. Hey, hey, hey. We can go to Burger King twice and get just two hamburgers in her whole month. But my granny used to call and say, Jimmy, come over and get my dollar. Take $2 worth of gas to go get that dollar. But my daddy said, I'm going to go get that dollar so my mama will be blessed. And my grandpa that never was saved until he was Oh, today's a very powerful day. Today we'll be giving out school supplies to the children that come. I'll be giving every family a bottle of anointing oil. But most of all, I'll be taking my hands. I'll put it all on my hands and anointing your child, your grandchild, your godchild, your niece and your nephew. You get them here today. Don't you let them go back to school without the blood covering. Our children needs to have the blood of Jesus on their life. If God could take and protect Noah in his whole house, they were in the middle of the flood, God protected. If God could protect Joseph while he was in the pit, God can protect your child while he's at school. If God could take Moses and bring him up out of the dungeon, which and bring him up out of the desert and bring him up and make a great deliver out of him, you know that God can protect your children. Make your plans to have your children and your grandchildren here today as I pray for them. We're excited what God is doing. If you want a word from Pastor Steve every day on Facebook, I don't do dramas and birthday, just go to Facebook and type in Pastor Steve Dobbs and I'll give you a word from God every single day. We're excited what God is doing. Come here today. Put your children first as you put God first in their life. Right here today at Paxson Revival Center Church, 11 a.m. We'll see you here.